Do-it-yourself robots are pretty cool, but in order to start even with a simple robot for line following or maze solving, we need to figure out how to control motors. In this video I'm going to show you how to use Raspberry Pi Pico to control a couple of DC motors. Toshiba TB6612 is a driver capable of controlling either one stepper motor or two DC motors. I designed a simple open source hardware breakout board to try it out with a Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm using KiCad, which is a free and open source software for designing printed circuit boards that runs on Microsoft Windows, Mac OS and Linux. I'm personally using it on Ubuntu. I designed a very simple two-layer board around TB6612. After doing the schematics, I went to the PCB view to make the outline of the printed circuit board. KiCad also has a 3D viewer. After uh, I'm done with the um, PCB, I've exported the Gerber and the drill files. These are basically the files that the factory takes in order to make a prototype for me. I rely on PCBWay.com for the prototypes used in this video. I highly recommend PCBWay and I'm very thankful that they're sponsoring this video. If you're looking for high quality prototypes or you want to do uh, manufacturing, go to PCBWay.com. They also offer additional services such as assembly, uh, metal sheet fabrication, 3D printing, CNC and even injection molding. PCBWay quickly made and delivered the prototypes. I have been using their services for several years now and they're celebrating their 10th anniversary this year in 2024. So they have been in business for quite some time and know what they're doing. Here are the prototypes of my boards. I've ordered them in green color with white silk screen. It is a very small and simple board. The core component is the Toshiba TB6612 chip which I bought from Mauser so I'm also unboxing here a parcel that I've received from Mauser. I bought the rest of the components from a local supplier here in Bulgaria. I need all of them in order to solder them on the printed circuit board. When you're designing a printed circuit board and dealing with a new chip, the first thing that you should do is to have a look at the data sheet. So I'm visiting Mauser.com where I purchased the TB6612 chip and have a look at the data sheet. Here is a closer look of the printed circuit board that I've designed in KiCad and PCBWay.com made for me. It is all open source and I have shared the whole KiCad project in GitHub. I put zones with ground on both sides of the printed circuit board and newer KiCad version supports hatch pattern for a field type. It looks really cool on the board. Toshiba TB6612 comes in a package suitable for assembly with the so-called surface mount technology, which involves factories and pick and place machines. However, the package of the integrated circuit is not so tiny, so it is also possible relatively easy to hand solder it for a prototype. This is exactly what I'm going to do. The bill of materials, also known as BOM, of the printed circuit board contains of course the TB6612 driver, a few capacitors, uh, screw terminal blocks and male header pins. I have already carefully soldered the uh, surface mount technology components and in this video I am soldering the true hole components which are the screw terminal blocks and the male header pins. I'm using an old trick with a breadboard to align properly all the pins so that they don't move while I'm soldering them. If you have been following the YouTube channel you know that I have my own open source hardware fume extractor which you actually can purchase from distributors. It keeps the dangerous fumes out of my face. Soldering is fun but it takes some time and thanks to modern technologies we can fast forward the video. We need three GPI opens to control one of the DC motors. My setup has two DC motors. This makes six GPI opens. Uh, additionally the Toshiba TB6612 driver has a standby pin which has also to be connected to a GPIO pin so that from the software side I can uh, optimize the energy consumption by turning on and off the standby mode. This makes in total 7 GPIO pins in order to connect uh, the breakout board that I've designed to uh, Raspberry Pi Pico or another uh, development board 
with a microcontroller or even a single board computer. Here is the test setup on my bench, let's have a quick look at it. Power is provided by a pack of four AA rechargeable batteries. They are connected to the screw terminal marked with V motor on the breakout board that I have designed. The DC motors are also connected to the same breakout board but on the other screw terminals marked with A and B. Using jumper wires I have connected the male header pins on the breakout board to Raspberry Pi Pico. VCC is connected to 3.3 volts provided for the Raspberry Pi Pico and ground is connected to ground. This way we are powering the driver itself. The rest of the pins on the breakout board are connected to GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi Pico development board. In order to try out the DC motors at different directions and different speeds, I created a simple Arduino sketch which I shared in GitHub. The speed of the motor is controlled with pulse width modulation. Each one of the pins on the Raspberry Pi Pico is capable of doing pulse width modulation. So um, it doesn't matter which one we'll pick when you're using Raspberry Pi Pico or Raspberry Pi Pico 2. The pool suite modulation from software side of things changes with a value from 0 to 255, the latter being the fastest speed available. Each motor can run at different speed, uh, but in my test both motors are running at the same speed. Let's have a look at the test. The Arduino sketch is super simple and straightforward. I have created an array with several different values with which I'm doing the test. There is an eternal loop, so the Arduino sketch keeps looping through the different values. There is a small gap between each test, so for a few seconds the motors stop after that they turn first in one direction and after that in the other direction. The Arduino sketch prints details about each test in the serial console, so in Arduino IDE through the serial monitor I can observe uh, this information to have a better understanding of each test. The Arduino sketch is all open source and I've shared it in GitHub. You are free to explore and modify it. Probably the most interesting part is the unlock write function through which we adjust the pulse width modulation and the speed. The Raspberry Pi Pico comes with 40 pins in total, 26 of which are programmable GPIO pins and each one of them is capable to do pulse width modulation. So basically you have the freedom to pick up any GPIO and connect it to the breakout port with TB6612. Thank you very much for watching this simple video. As you have seen, it's easy to get started with Toshiba TB6612. It's a great little integrated circuit, uh, especially useful for controlling DC motors on a do-it-yourself robot. Of course, in order to make this robot um, useful, I need to put a bunch of sensors. Let me know in the comments below what kind of sensors would you recommend me to use. I already have some ideas for follow-up videos. Thank you very much for watching. Of course, as usual, stay tuned for new videos. See you soon.